Hello, today we're going to be doing standard 5.2, which is on the time evolution in an infinite square well. We're going to be doing problem 5.8 out of McIntyre. The question states, a particle in an infinite square well has an initial wave function psi of x t equals 0, which is equal to a times x times l minus x, where l is the length of the square well. And we want to find the time evolution of the state vector, and also the expectation value of the position as a function of time, not just the expectation value of the ground state. So to start off, we just want to normalize this. And to do that, we're going to solve for the value of a that makes the state normalized. And to do that, we take this integral here. We set 1 equal to the integral from 0 to l of this initial, initial wave function here, modulus squared. And then when we do that, it's just going power rule backwards. When we square, we multiply through and integrate. We have this 1 over modulus a squared. And when we go through, since an overall phase does not affect the physicality of the system, has no physical meaning. We can choose a to be real and positive, therefore we have a equal to root 30 over l to the fifth. And that gives us our normalized initial wave function, which is psi of x0 equal to root 30 over l to the fifth times x times the quantity l minus x. So here, the next part, we do have a little bit of fun with some calculations here as you see, but we want to find the next necessary piece to find the time evolution that we desire, and we need the expansion coefficient, Cn. And to do that, we first we solve this little inner product here. We have Cn is equal to the inner product of the eigenstate En with this initial wave function, psi of x0. And now here, to do that, we just take this, we, since here we're using the position representation of the inner product, we take this integral here, and we have the um, eigenstate here, the energy eigenstate, and then here we have our initial wave function that we just found. And now that we have that, we can just pull out our constants and integrate. Here I type this into Wolfram because this is a kind of a nasty integral. We get this wonderful, wonderful piece of, of um, math right here with a bunch of n's and pi's floating around. We're going to evaluate this from 0 to l, so this is our antiderivative. The reason I have it separated here is because this cosine and sine, when we start evaluating at 0 and L, we're going to be left with a cosine, basically a proportion equal to cosine pi n, and a proportion equal to sine pi n. And since the cosine pi n alternates in sine, as n is odd and even, I left this piece apart because we're going to get this alternating term right here. So once we evaluate this, we get that we get that Cn is equal to 4 times root 15 over the quantity n pi cubed, and then this is multiplied by negative 1 to the n plus 1 plus 1. And since here the sign changes based off the value of n, we're going to get a different value when n is even and odd. When it's odd, we get 8 times root 15 over n pi cubed, and then we get 0 when n is odd, or I mean when n is even, excuse me. So this looks a little nasty at first, but this is actually going to make our life a lot simpler now when we're looking at the expectation value. But before we do that, let's first define what our time evolution state vector looks like. We have that psi of xt is equal to the sum for n equals 1 to infinity of our evaluation coefficient here times the energy eigenstate phi of n, and then this is multiplied by e to the negative i ent, where en is the energy eigen energy measurement, the energy eigenvalue. And since here, we're only looking, since it's zero every time it's even, we just have the sum when n is odd, times 8 times root 15 over the quantity n pi cubed, all times root 2 over l sine of n pi x over l times e to the negative i e to the e sub n times t. And now that we have that, we could, of course, pull out some constants here, but we're going to just leave it like this. And now, we need the expectation value of the position as a function of time. And to do this, we're going to note that we're only working with the odd terms here, and we can actually think critically about how this is going to work rather than working out numerically. And the reason we want to do this is because as, as soon as we view, view this analytically or numerically and we set it up as an integral, we're going to have two infinite series inside an integral, and it's going to get very nasty. And of course, we can use some different things with parity and ortho orthonormality to kind of cancel terms out. But instead, we're just going to note 
that since this is going to be a sum of integrals of products of sines, and each of these has an odd n term inside, um, the wave function is just going to be symmetric about l equal l over 2, and that's because of the odd n. We're going to have this antinode at l over 2 each time, and it's going to be symmetric about that point. And since we have that, and since we're only looking at the time evolution of each of, of all the odd terms, it's 0 elsewhere, which is also going to have a value of l over 2 as its expectation value because it's just a flat line. This means that our expectation value as a function of time is, here we have x equal to l over 2, which is really nice and is actually much simpler than it could have been using the calculation. So that'll be it, and thank you. Bye.